Hi guys. Firstly, I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us for our session. You're going to hear a lot today about how the podcast market is maturing in the UK and growing to encompass new and bigger audiences. But as the audience grows, what I want to focus on in this session is how the breadth and tone of the content we're listening to is also changing. The reason we choose to spend up to an hour with the podcasts we love has always been because they spark our curiosity and make us laugh. But now, increasingly, it's also because they can act as a source of comfort and support. Today, with everything that's happening in the world around us, it's never been more important to have conversations that may be difficult or uncomfortable. Podcasts are creating a safe space to have these discussions where other media can't. You might not feel comfortable sitting in your living room with your family watching a programme on TV about dealing with anxiety. And likewise, you may not want to announce the way you're feeling on social media through the influencers and content you choose to follow and like. But when you listen to a podcast, it's a conversation between you and that host. Totally discreet. Hosts share some of their most intimate experiences and feelings. And it's this authenticity that creates the perfect space for brands wanting to tell their story. Even back in 2019, 64% of Gen Z and millennials in the UK wanted companies to take a stand on the social, cultural, environmental and political issues closest to their hearts. And over half of UK consumers say their purchasing consideration is driven by a company's ethical values and authenticity. This means there's a clear reason for brands to engage with these topics. But to really understand why podcasts are the best place to do this, we need to speak to the podcasters themselves. To do that, we're going to start off by speaking to broadcaster and author Simon Thomas. After a career with the BBC and Sky Sports, Simon now hosts a successful podcast on Global Player, Life Interrupted with Simon Thomas. Simon, thanks for joining us today, mate. It's much Pleasure. appreciated. Um, for anyone who hasn't listened to Life Interrupted, can you give us a quick overview of what the podcast is actually about? Well, the podcast idea for Life Interrupted came out of an event that I went through, a couple of events, nearly three years ago. I, I firstly came away from broadcasting at Sky with very bad depression, anxiety and panic attacks. I went through a very bad interruption to life, which was mental health problems. But then very suddenly, out of nowhere, my wife fell in with cancer and, and died within three days. So if you talk about a life interruption, that was as big as it got. But I think as the months went on, I spoke to so many other people who'd gone through not maybe something exactly like that, but big life events where life had suddenly gone in a completely different direction that they didn't expect and take them to a very low place. But you'd hear their stories of how they came through it and how different, and actually, in many of the cases, how good life was now. And I thought there's something in this that life can throw at us some really bad things, some really tough challenges, but there is always a way through. And I wanted to have a podcast that would challenge people, but also infuse them with hope that whatever life brings you, even if it's really, really difficult, there's a narrow way through. Yeah. I mean, clearly tackling some very sensitive, potentially difficult subjects. What was it about podcasting as a medium that made you think this is the right way to broach these topics? I'm so used to doing live television. I did Sky Sports for years, the football, and I'm so used to interviewing people where you're always on a time limit. There's always someone in your ear going, one minute to go. And yeah, football's very different to what we're talking about in Life Interrupted. But what I loved about getting into podcasts, and in particular this one, is just that freedom to explore stuff. Yes, occasionally there's an agent waiting outside the door and saying, come on, you've only got 10 minutes more. But sometimes they'll tell you something really amazing and fascinating. Like a guy called Duncan Slage interviewed, had both his legs blown off in Afghanistan, but has lived this most amazing life since. And I asked him towards the end, if you could go back and change what happened on that day all those years ago when you hit that landmine, would you? He went, no. A remarkable answer. The podcast gives you the freedom to then explore that, go in a completely different direction. And you also get a, a level of honesty that I don't think you get anywhere else because it's a very intimate thing. It's just essentially me and the guest sat in the room, chewing the cud, talking these big issues through and listening to their story. You get that freedom, you get that intimacy that I don't think you get anywhere else. And with a subject like this, whether we're talking about mental health, we're talking about grief, or we're just talking about a life transforming event, it gives us that, that intimacy, but also just that, that trust between the two of us that, yeah, you understand a little bit of what I'm going through and have gone through, and I'm okay to talk about it. And it's an amazing thing. And, and I think for the people listening, they feel like they've been invited into this room, just them and you and the other guests, to listen to an incredible story. It's interesting you talk about the intimacy with both the guests on the podcast mm -hmm. and the listener. Obviously, you've worked across a whole bunch of different media. Um, that connection with the listener, 
Is that something that you found is kind of more apparent, I suppose almost dialed up a notch through podcasting compared to other forms of media? And do you get the listeners getting in touch with you, kind of commenting on how listening to your podcast has affected them? Absolutely. I think what I've found is that when you talk about tough stuff in life, you know, if, if it is an area like grief, which is an area of life we still find very difficult to vocalise and talk about with our friends, let alone anybody else. And what I've found in doing the podcast is the comments you get afterwards is, is about how much it's helped them, not just to understand themselves a little bit more, but to understand that that biggest thing in life we need. When we struggle with something, when we're going through illness, whatever it might be, it's that feeling we're not alone. That's incredibly powerful. And I think that's what the podcast does, Life Interrupted does, and numerous others do. It connects with people and says, look, life can be really, really crap sometimes, but you are not alone. And that's a connection that's very hard to get anywhere else. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose as we start having more and more of these difficult conversations, as they're becoming more prevalent and becoming more aware of them in society as a whole, more brands are starting to engage with difficult topics of conversation. Now, obviously, you need to do this carefully. Mm. I mean, what advice would you give to brands who are looking to engage with people in these areas? And have you seen any examples that you think are particularly good where they've done that well? Well, I don't want to take this as a sign of things to do with my podcast, but, but the first, one of the first advertisers got in touch and said, actually, would you voice over yeah. this advertising campaign? We want to run in conjunction with a podcast. It was for erectile dysfunction. I mean, my podcast is called Life Interrupted. That sounded like Love Interrupted. Absolutely. But we won't go there. But yep. it gives brands an amazing opportunity to, to tap into particular areas. Like, you know, with the podcast I'm doing, you know, health and well-being is part of it. That's one mm. of the categories it sits in. So it gives companies an opportunity to go, this is a specific marketplace that we want to advertise in. Yeah. And we've got then a very direct access to a particular audience. And, and that isn't offered in the same way anywhere else. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously you're working on your second series at the moment. Mm. Given everything that's happening at, in, around the world, kind of in times we're currently in, what are you doing differently? How are you approaching this, uh, I suppose, to reflect the current times? Well, I think there's a plus and a minus to it. The, the plus is we, we've just had the biggest life interruption that any of us yeah, have gone absolutely. through. And, it, and it's been a global thing. Mm. It's been a, a nationwide thing. It's not just been a few of us going through. It's been every, all of us. We've all had life as we knew it interrupted. So I think that's going to open up some fascinating conversations in terms of how people dealt with isolation, with loneliness, with struggling with relationships, with, with homeschooling kids. There's a plethora of layers to this, the loss of identity, the loss of jobs. The downside of it is, is I, I find it really good when I'm sat, like we're sat now yeah. and I can judge not just through the voice but how that person is looking as to where emotionally they're at and you don't always get that through just hearing their voice and for the time being most of the interviews will be for the second series with me on a pair of headphones of and a microphone yeah. we'll try and get a video link up but sometimes the sync's slightly out so I will miss having that person sat in the same studio and just feeling that really close connection which I don't think I'll get in quite the same way but I think we're going to get a whole different level of content because of what everyone's gone through and actually we're still going through. Yeah, absolutely. Simon, thank you so much for your time today. Much appreciated. Loved it, pleasure. Uh, thank you, Simon. And now we're going to hear from some more of our amazing podcast talent. I've decided to come up with this brand new concept. Podcasts. They ain't been done yet. Well, first of all, introduce it. It's Confessions of a Modern Parent. Hi, I'm Imriel Morgan. I'm the host of Wannabe. Hi, it's JK here from Heart. I do a show with Kelly Brook, but what you may not know is I also do a podcast for dads called Don't Tell Your Mum. Hi, I'm Frankie Bridge, and I created my podcast, Open Mind, to start the conversation about mental health. Hello, I'm Josh Whittacombe. Hello, I'm Rob Beckett. And we are the hosts of Lockdown Parenting Hell mm -hmm. Podcast. Hi, my name's Gemma and I'm working with Global on a new podcast called Good Influence. I host a number of podcasts, but one of them is Ian Dale All Talk. And that stems from my Edinburgh Fringe show, so I in interview comedians, politicians and big names. It's called Life Changing. What points in your life led up to this moment today? Like, why am I chatting to you? How did this podcast happen? Who brought you here? What is you? What is life? The right Minded will give you everything from ups and downs. I created Wannabe because my younger sister was applying for university and she didn't really know what she wanted to do. And I remember having a similar crisis as I was younger 
and not really figuring it out until much, much later in my career where I've now ended up in podcasting and in broadcast and audio, which is just like so far from what I could have ever imagined I'd be doing. Actually, now I can remember initially why we started mm. this was I, we've done a topic. No, I had brought it up at Loose Women, that's right about the loneliness that comes in when you're when you're a parent of a teen. We'd read an article, hadn't mm. we, from America. I decided to create a podcast because I think it feels like quite a natural format for me. I'm more used to written media than a lot of video that people seem to do these days, which I'm never quite as comfortable with. Why did you decide to do Lockdown Parenting Hell podcast? The reason why um, I wanted to start the podcast is uh, the pandemic hit and all the theatres shut and I had to postpone my tour. So I wanted to earn, you know, a few quid from my uh, my own home, essentially. What about you? Uh, I wanted to do it because I just thought it was a nice thing to do to help parents that were struggling in a difficult time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that as well. But um, but mainly, mainly the, 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 yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was, yeah it's, that was the same for me, really. Not the money was just an added bonus. Podcasting is extremely powerful. I've been in podcasting for about five years and what I love the most about them is the intimacy and the ability to connect with another person's story so viscerally that you don't really get in other mediums. I think I've definitely been moved by film and documentaries, TV shows, and there is something quite lovely about seeing um, seeing these stories on screen and seeing them unfold but there's something quite different in having to listen not letting the visual distract you or detract from the story the main message I want to get across is anyone can change their life at any time but has there been a podcast that has addressed that issue do you want to make a change to your life do you want to make a difference do you want to improve or make your life even worse then tune into life changing because my listeners are gonna find a way to change their lives and this should help them. I'd say the main message of our podcast is that parenting isn't what it looks like on Instagram. It isn't, I was about to say it isn't fun. It's fun sometimes. It's often. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's mostly not. <laughs> it's mostly not. That's what I, I'm trying I think, to say. I think we were being made to feel like bad parents because it was so yeah. difficult in lockdown. So, you know, being able to just talk casually and normally about it and interview like some really, f we've had Jonathan Ross on, Jack D, Peter Crouch, all these big stars, you expect, you expect their life so easy and you yeah. know, they were just moaning the same way as everyone else on the school run was moaning. So I think it made people at home feel like, oh, well, Peter Crouch is struggling. That's fine if exactly. I Exactly. That's you know the I mean? main thing. As long as Crouch is struggling, Britain's okay. Podcasts are a great place to delve into mental health issues, depression, issues you've been going through because if someone like us can discuss them and my guests then it's even better for you to relate to them people think we're all living different lives essentially we're all living pretty similar lives because we're sharing this point in this time on this planet at this particular point and it ain't difficult it ain't easy but it's pretty much the same for it well it is difficult it's difficult for all of us mental health is a big subject and it's very important for people to relate to each other to help break through those barriers of mental health. Black Lives Matter is very important because now non-white people and entertainers have finally got a chance and an opportunity in the entertainment business. It's good to be here. As someone that has suffered from depression and anxiety for most of my life, um, I've realized how alone that can make you feel. And by starting the podcast, I wanted to make others feel heard, to help to understand themselves and to listen to people who they see on TV or they see in magazines who they assume have this perfect life to kind of get to know them and to learn that everybody suffers with their mental health in some way or another, no matter who they are or what they do. It's a safe place for our listeners to understand that everybody goes through ups and downs in life, whatever the job, whether it be a sports star, an entertainment star, a singer, or just the boy next door or the girl next door. Um, and it just allows our listeners to, to understand they're not alone. I'm going to be honest, just before, and this is what's so wonderful about having a podcast rather than being on telly with mm. something like this, is that we can let it run and run and run. Mm. And often... 
as we really have to gird our loins sometimes before we go into the studio or into our room, obviously we're in COVID at the moment and, and, and recording at home, because we know we're gonna dig deep, because that is what we need to do to connect with the audience, for them to come to us rather than to go somewhere else. You, these are the conversations you don't typically hear in the public space, and podcasting is definitely opening up the doors for people to have conversations that they would have behind closed doors, um, have in their whatsapp groups or just in private chats and now you're kind of eavesdropping if you will on these chats between people that you probably ordinarily just would never interact with um in your day-to-day -day lives i mean certainly people do gravitate to podcasts that seem like their people but there is something very powerful about dropping into these conversations at any time at any point i think of all the kind of mediums i think podcast feels the most like you're just having a chat there's no audience who you feel you have to play to or there's no kind of oh i'm on tv i need to yeah, i can need to look good etc etc you're just having a chat essentially down a, a a slightly souped up phone and i think it yeah. means that people are much more honest and i think you know when we started this podcast i don't think we were thinking oh let's talk about postnatal depression or let's talk about you know how difficult various elements of parenting are yeah. but i think you know genuinely you can talk about anything from postnatal depression to finding a shit in a shoe well, exactly. And did you find it easier in episode seven to discuss your micro penis over the well, podcast, or you know? <laughs> I did find it easier, mm. and I also I, I thought going to Zoom to show you was a mistake. Yeah, I yeah, of course. I, That's why we've uh, since gone back to to using just yeah, audio. Exactly. But, you know, it's, you know, it's good. You got to get it off your chest. You don't often get to say that with a micro penis, well, <laughs> but um, it's good to you know just be honest about it and let everyone know. Exactly. And exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So you've just heard from some of the top podcast hosts in the UK how podcasts create the perfect space to have personal, discreet conversations and how this can be a brilliant place for brands to truly engage with consumers. Whether the podcast is tackling a difficult subject such as mental health or something altogether more lighthearted, it's a space where you can tap into the relationship between a host and their audience around content that truly matters to them. And by working with DAX, you can also see proof that this approach works. Tracking performance from podcast advertising was always difficult due to the fact the majority of podcasts are listened to in-app. But the addition of cross-device mapping to our Listener Insight ID product means that we can now effectively track online behaviour after a user has been exposed to a podcast ad. I want to thank you again for your time today. I hope it's been useful. And as always, the DAX team are more than happy to answer any questions you might have off the back of the session. Thank you.